Welcome aboard the Besetto Express. We'll cover three countries: Bay, Beijing in China, Se, Seoul in Korea, and To, Tokyo in Japan. Together, we'll explore the culture of Besetto. All aboard the Besetto Express. Makeup is a woman's destiny and a ritual of becoming an adult. The word cosmetic comes from the Greek word kosmo, meaning command of the universe. So, in other words, makeup is an order given to women from the universe. The first form of cosmetics or makeup is said to have first started in 7500 BC in Egypt and perfected by Cleopatra. The early forms of makeup were to protect the skin from the hot, blazing sun. To this was added a woman's basic instinct of wanting to become beautiful, which created a variety of color makeups and beauty care methods for maintaining beautiful skin. Makeup and cosmetics became more developed as women started to advance into public society. Today, women's beauty care has come to even reflect the economic standard or social aspects of a nation. To Besetto Express, the famous American actress Sharon Stone is said to sleep 14 hours per day, not because she just likes to sleep a lot, but in order to maintain her beautiful skin. And also, supermodels like Cindy Crawford drinks two to three liters of water per day to maintain her beautiful skin. As such, various methods have been used by women to become beautiful. Well then, let's learn how the woman of the three Besetto countries becomes beautiful. Because of influences from Confucianism, there are almost no records about women in Korea. The susemi or sponge gourd was the most common cosmetic water. The Changpo iris was used for baths on lunar May 5th. There was a belief that if one washed their hair and bathed in Changpo iris water, it would give shiny hair and fine skin. As such, Korean beauty care objects were natural items that could easily be found in nature. Korean natural cosmetics prevented side effects by using ingredients in their natural way instead of processing them. Powdered grains were used for facial cleansing. Ginkgo nuts have great effects in removing dead skin. You can also get whitening effects if you wash your face in water that was used to clean rice. Black sesame was effective for people with lots of wrinkles on the face. Once you wash your face with water mixed with grain, facial water made by grinding various vegetables is used. Cucumbers have good whitening effects, and sponge gourds were also used often in the past. This natural facial water is made by grinding and filtering Korean lettuce that has tranquilizing effects and duduk root that purifies the blood and helps to make a finer complexion. Through these examples, you can see the wisdom of Korean women who made and used beauty care cosmetics right and needed for their skin type and condition. When you mix the different ingredients, they should be grinded until they become very fine and soft to the touch. Korean women have cared for their skin with easily found vegetables or grains, but because of the food's value, leftover or recycled food ingredients for their beauty care materials was used. You can once again confirm the wisdom and prudence of Korean women. Chinese beauties of the past mostly had plump figures, and white and shiny skin were thought of as being precious. So various skin care methods of making the skin white and glossy were developed. The most representative methods are bathing in milk or goat milk, 
and the common people took baths in tea leaf brewed water as well. Empress Yang Kui Fei's beauty care methods have the most surviving records. Other than the bathing methods, she maintained her beautiful skin by eating Chinese medicine. In other words, it was making beautiful skin from within the inner body. Good herbal medicines were used by being made into creams. Such beauty care methods are still passed on today, being used by Chinese women for their skin care. In modern times, high science and technology has been added to such methods, helping women have finer, shinier, and more resilient skin. Electric acupuncture to increase the rate of blood flow is also used to give more vitality to the skin. Mm-hmm. Because of its volcanic landscapes, Japan has many hot springs all over the place. And since it's an island nation surrounded by seawater, it is natural for different bathing methods to be created to wash off the stickiness of salt water on the body. Japanese people love taking a dip in the outdoor hot springs in the cold winters. In regions where there are many hot springs, houses have their own spas inside the homes. The spring waters are not only hot in temperature, but various minerals are also contained. So, hot springs are greatly effective for skin care. The Japanese people don't have many other special skin care methods other than the spas, but they also think of drinking tea as an important part of skin care. To the Japanese people, the most important criteria for a beautiful woman is her white and fine skin. But since they believe that real white skin comes from within the inner body, they believe that they can get whiter skin by drinking tea. Since tea helps you lose weight and removes waste materials from the body, drinking tea regularly helps you to have softer, shinier, and more resilient skin. Tea was also used for baths. Since tea has high vitamin C levels, it was thought that if you washed your body with tea brewed water, it would help to relieve stress and also to give finer skin. In early summer, young girls of Korea dye their fingernails with blossom flowers. It is believed that if this flower dye remains on your nails when the first snow falls, your love will come true. Balsam flowers is a more modest and simple beauty than your modern day fingernail polish. Well then, shall we learn the traditional makeup techniques of the Beseto countries and look at how women color themselves with beautiful colors? <laughs> Women with makeup have appeared in cave paintings of the 6th century. Using mostly red tones, makeup had important shamanistic significance. There are records from the Koryo dynasty saying that there were events held in the palace that gathered beautiful women together to develop various color makeup methods. These methods were passed on to the Chosun dynasty. Materials used in makeup of the past include eyebrow pencils made from charcoal and ash, rouge made from flowers, and facial powder made by grinding seeds. The typical and ordinary day makeup of Korean women was very light and simple, but on special days like weddings, complete makeup techniques were used. The Yeonji Gonji were drawn on the faces from the Three Kingdoms period. In the Chosun dynasty, it was used as a symbol for to be married brides. 
Traditionally, dark and heavy makeup were thought to be done only by the gisengs, or dancers and singers. Hakabun powder produced in 1916 was the first product of Korea's cosmetic industrialization. Let's remodel the traditional makeup methods of Korea. Women thought white skin was the first element for beauty and used various powders. Powders made with pearls or marvel of Peru seeds and cheek blushes were considered very precious. A clip used for plucking eyebrows was used since long ago. The eyebrow acquired the most care during the makeup of the face. Crescent moon-shaped eyebrows were the most ideal looking, expressing the inner beauty of the eyes. Cheek blush was used to make the cheeks pink. Cherry red color was best for the lips. The red dye extracted from flowers was used as rouge for the lips. This was one of the most precious makeup in those periods. Camellia oil was used to care for the hair. For its proper hold and good scent, it was used very often for neat hairdos. Korean women made it a rule to decorate themselves only in the limits of not changing their original looks, so simple makeup techniques had developed. Thin and natural, crescent-shaped eyebrows and unexaggerated cherry red lips. Decorating themselves with natural ingredients, Korean women seem to look as graceful as nature itself. Nowadays, heavy makeup has a new significance to Korean women. Women wear makeup for their self-confidence and their individualistic style. That is why their appearances are more varied and unique. The history of makeup is said to have started from the moment women existed on Earth. However, the first remaining record is the prehistorical cave painting from 1250 BC. <laughs> With its diverse people and varied cultural influences, China developed the most elaborate colors than any other country. Their makeup has also developed into more fancy and diverse tones of color. And the Chinese opera made styles of stage makeup become a fashion trend, making common, also emphasizing their facial features with dark makeup. Such a phenomenon is the same for Japan. However, unlike the Japanese stage makeup that applies heavy makeup in order to hide the facial expressions, Chinese stage makeup is used to exaggerate the facial expression. Materials used for Chinese makeup are also from nature. There are times when the dye is not extracted and rather a paper flower petal is bitten to dye the lips red. The opening up of the nation brought many changes in modern makeup of China. Most women used formal makeup according to traditions in the past. But now, makeup is applied to make their weaknesses look better. 
The biggest change is that most women try to look more like Westerners in this makeup process. For example, they try to make their faces shaped like an egg and use techniques that make one look like they have big and deep eyes. High noses have become a popular fashion trend. Japanese people have used red color in makeup for incantation purposes. In the mid-sixth century, they used flowers and fruits, and that built the foundation for Japanese traditional makeup. In the 13th through 16th period, men also wore makeup before going to war. The origins of traditional white makeup is said to have come from when it was hard to see inside the house after dark unless one used white colored makeup. The geishas still initiate the traditional methods of makeup. They lay importance on their back appearances so they don't forget to apply makeup even to the back of their necks. White skin, red and small lips, eyebrows located high up, thin eyes, and long black hair surrounding the face. The traditional makeup methods were done by the geishas, but since the Edo dynasty, they spread to the common people as well. Because of the belief that it's not good to show others your plain face, the characteristic of Japanese traditional makeup is to conceal the real color of the face completely, and the white face represents nobleness. The makeup used in the kabuki play, performed without using facial expressions, tried hard not to reveal one's emotions. The modern women of Japan prefer transparent makeup, the white skin, which was expressed with white powder in the past, is now achieved through whitening beauty care cosmetics. As such, the striving effort of Japanese women to have white skin seems to have not changed even with the change of history. Wearing makeup in Korea is a sign that says you are a fully mature woman. That's why people give cosmetics as presents to newly graduating student girls. But keeping the body clean and pure is taught before fancy makeup techniques and colors. That's because there's a belief that the outer beauty comes from the heart. But still, the woman of the three Beseto countries uses various methods and unique techniques to become beautiful. I guess women's efforts at becoming beautiful is the same everywhere. Well, did you enjoy the show? I hope you did, and I'll see you again on our next Beseto Express.